just feel like Gordon Bombay would have taken his career to even further heights. Everything's flashy, everything's cocaine, everything's fun. Open wide for some soccer! I don't care what you think about, what your personal thoughts are at home. I care that you hate the Cowboys. Call this college rule! Welcome, everybody, to the Sports Experience Podcast. I'm Chris. This is Dom, just a couple of comics who like to talk about sports. We are not in any kind of block, but if you like those episodes, please check them out. Maybe uh, give us a recommendation on another block episode. But uh, today we're on the ice. Today we're on the ice. Yeah. yeah. We do these hockey ones a little bit frequently now. Yep. Um, usually we, uh, today though, we have possibly the person who could be the best American professional hockey player who's ever lived born in america i would say that definitely uh just by uh his stats and his beautiful hair and you know what i'm talking beautiful face beautiful face beautiful soul oh my god we're talking about mike madonna today we're talking about that star that brought hockey to texas they said ice wouldn't work and they had Mike come down. Ice works in Texas, just a different kind of ice. Oh my God, that's true. That's more New Mexico, Arizona, but that's you know what? You know Let's what? Just all of South- the ices, Let's even just- the Italian ices, work in Texas. Let's just say Southwest. Southwest. So he could have been the original Minnesota Miracle Man. That's true, but you know, someone else kind of didn't, didn't work out. Didn't work out. out. All right. So Michael Thomas Madonna Jr. Born June 7th. So just recently celebrated his 54th birthday in 1970 in Livonia, Michigan, um, was the third child, only son of a dad, Michael Sr. And his mom, Karen. That's right. Different kind of Karen in the seventies than it is today. So two sisters, one mom, one dad. I know you one were cup. I know Stanley you were. Cup. One Wonder. Stanley that's Cup. True. That's true. That's sister's one Stanley Cup coming to with. Th- oh God. He was a rambunctious child. Yes, he was. <laughs> Which is it's funny because when I when I was reading that, I was really thinking they were like uh, he was talking like twelve, thirteen. They were like, no, no. When he was five, <laughs> he was uncontrollable, and you were like, oh, okay. He's like that kid on Mad TV, Stewart. Yep. <laughs> Look what I can do. Look what I can do. He's just on the ice. Oh, but they decide to channel all that, you know, energy and excitement into hockey. That's well, what his dad wants kind of. They live in the great white north, you know, mm-hmm. one of those northern states like Michigan or Canada. But <laughs> it should belong his, to us, Chris. His dad was a huge hockey fan. Like that wasn't it wasn't really a departure where you see like, oh, you're into it was like a family thing where you're like, we're skating all the time and by 6 he looked like one of those kids that is just above the other kids out there where you're like, oh, you kind of get this. Do you think they wanted to, if it had it at the time, 23 and me, are you sure you're not Canadian? Yep. Are you sure you're not Canadian because of how good you are at this? Um, it was a good outlet, though. I had read in Bonding Experience yes. uh, with him and his dad, yep, which bonding I thought ex- was pretty cool. And the, the team aspect, I heard somebody say this on an interview that he was like, oh, that like taught me how to like behave with other people my own age because that was like huge he had huge problems in like school and shit oh yeah it was yeah no it's just like oh i'm just becoming an adolescent becoming an adult now dude he was fulton reed he became charlie conway he became charlie conway and as we'll get into later he meets fulton reed which we discussed in a previous episode hey hey, we'll get into it brought that up we'll get into it so by age 12 um he's playing in the 1982 quebec international peewee hockey tournament um for a youth team sponsored by the uh, detroit red wings yeah and uh, i believe that was his dad's favorite team and his favorite team growing up yes i mean you're in Michigan. There's really only one hockey team, right? I mean, that's no. and that really is true. And uh, he comes back. He actually plays for them later. We'll get into that. But uh, and this time he picks his his number is number nine. That I love this that he's famous for. So I, I thought that was good because he had two. He had uh, Ted Williams, which th- there's something about like Boston or like Red Sox where like they'll have fans just across America. Yeah. His and dad, right? Yes. In Tiger's country of all places. Yep. <laughs> and oh, and who was the other one? Mr. Huh? Uh, uh, Woodrow, the guy on the uh, card sent to Mrs. Krabappel. Gordy Howe, so, who's probably still playing in I w- 1982. I was going to say, so it was really that kind of like these guys are top of their class oh, in, yeah. in this sport. And he was like, I'm going to be that. I'm going to be number nine. 
And yeah, man. Uh, so in 84, uh, 85, he has 50 goals and 50 assists. Is this when they moved? Sorry, because I, yeah, I, I, yeah, mm -hmm. I saw something in that where it literally said the family picked up and moved so he could be in a better conference because I don't know if you knew this, but the year before they redrew the districts. They did. They redrew them at the lake, too. Lake's not the boundary anymore. He'd be a duck, Chris. He would be a duck. And his family had to move so that he could still be a hawk. That's what I'm trying. Him. That's the thing that you don't understand about these peewee games. Just decking other rich kids on breakaways. That's the Mike Madonna story. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. So he's dominating the competition, though. Yes. He's just he's not quite Lindros size, but he's a big dude. Mm -hmm. And for his not only for his age, but just for any ages. Well, I saw they said this. They were like, he was always lanky, but he was always like three, four inches taller. Like he he had size on guys, and that's why he ends up moving up. Yeah. And playing with kids who are like actually technically older, which if you have a prodigy coming through, that's the best thing to do. Absolutely. And it's not like it's he's lanky, but it's like, oh, He's still developing. It's gonna just get fill him in out. a weight room. Yep. Like, just make sure it's make sure you're cultivating the right mass. That's true. Because you got to cultivate mass. Well, I'm gonna stop hard. cultivating one of these times, but <laughs> it's not soon. It's time to harvest. It's time to harvest, Mac. Uh, so it's 16. Uh, Coach Rick Wilson invites him to join the Prince Albert Raiders in juniors there, and. Uh, I didn't know Raiders. I just thought Cock Studs. That, 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 that was going to be the nickname, but there I was we mistaken. Go. But in the Dom doesn't know they ended up changing their name. But this is, <laughs> this is another thing that I saw because he ends up moving to Canada when he's 16 mm -hmm. to play in this Canadian league. And he said when he first showed up, every single one of them was like, this American needs to fuck. Get out of here <laughs> because you're, giving, you're taking a spot from a Canadian. They are so into their thing and then they saw him on the ice and they were like uh okay we'll be quiet oh yank think you're so special eh you're, it, you're taking her jobs it really <laughs> it really was like, like the that opposite of south park when he showed up he was like felt the hostility and he was like all right let's just wait and he dominates i'm gonna kick your ass and see how well your socialized medicine works yep but uh, so in I'll the tell you what in this league he pierced a couple of penises. I you would have to. He's the prince. He's the Prince Albert. I mean, you got to live up to the where your team is from. That's right? that's I what mean, I'm saying. It's called town pride. That's <laughs> <laughs> so. By year two, he's an all star, and he's just dominating this Western Hockey League. Yes, like he's the best player there, and he's doing it for the old stars and stripes, which is. I don't know. That's pretty incredible, though. I mean, like to be able to go and do that, like just new city, new everything, new everything at sixteen, and and like we were saying, he really. This is when the because I I imagine through these youth groups, you're just like, yeah, he is really good. But at this point, when he's like yeah. sixteen and he's doing fifty and fifty, uh, fifty goals, fifty assists seasons, they're just like, oh yeah, he's gonna get drafted. Really high, yeah. Because <laughs> this is the this is like the top youth league of Canada, which is the top. I don't know why I'm explaining hockey right no. now, but it literally they're is really good at hockey. Though. Yeah, they're just really good at hockey. But it really is, and he was outstanding in this league. So that's when we get to '88 and the summer of '88 when he's eligible for the NHL entry draft. That's right. And what happens, Chris, on June 11th, 1988? The Minnesota Stars. The North Stars. The North Stars come in and they uh, they draft him, but then there's a period. Well, they draft him number one overall. Number one Didn't overall, which add. I did want to look this up because I was like, was that a reach because he was American? And this is the, one of the things I love reading back on. Everyone was just like, oh, no, no, no. He was without a doubt yeah. going to go to number one no matter who was picking. It's so weird. An American? How exotic. Yes, dude. Like seriously. <laughs> We've never had one of these before. I think he was the second American pick to number one overall. Do all Americans have bald eagles tattooed on their penises? It's just him. It's just Mike Madonna. Allegedly. Uh, hey. This is the allegedly penis podcast. We've had some alleged <laughs> penis allegations. Shaquille. Kazam. Anyway, oh but God. like you said, he was the consensus like number one dude yes. in this draft. But like you said before, also, there was a period where... He doesn't join the North Stars immediately. And uh, what takes place there? 
for him? Well, the because there's a contract dispute, mm-hmm. and the thing in this era, which I, I didn't really understand, because this is like the really first agents controlling a bunch of shit. Yeah, um, I didn't really get the what he was like actually trying to get more than money yeah kind of thing but like when you look at the the what they were offering him it was legit for a first rounder it was yeah but but the, he wanted so much more well the north star is probably one of the league's poorest franchises I was just gonna say, one of the most crappily run which they we'll were discuss down the road on the on the brink of not foreclosure but moving like a like a major league style yeah you know what i mean they're gonna been, relocate to my, which yep. for hockey doesn't That's, i mean granted the panthers right now whatever i won't talk shit about florida hockey but just gonna say it's just a very weird thing we're gonna relocate to dallas <laughs> which but that's the thing is they are in in flux right now as a franchise. I mean, not not uh, not not in the best of spot because you're picking first. It's, you're obviously not doing, and this is before the NHL lottery, so they earned. That yeah, yeah, they were one they were like the worst team. <laughs> so he signs on Christmas, uh, 1988. Eventually, well, he I was gonna say because he goes back and plays with the Raiders for like yeah. two or three months before like trying to get all of this contract shit si- like figured out, which to me was a, actually pretty smart to keep himself in hot. Not to say. Oh, he yeah. would have gotten out of shape, but just to continue playing. Yep. Like in that we talked about in the Lindros episode, that window where he went back to Oshawa uh, with the Quebec shit. Yep. But uh, so he joins them for the 89 90 season, and uh, he was a finalist for the Calder Trophy. You know, he's coming right along. Have, so he, he's uh, all rookie, uh, whatever, um, all rookie team. And then is second for the rookie of the year, which is bullshit. And why I always felt those Hideo Nomo and Ichiro uh, rookies of the year. Yep. Not that they weren't great players, but he lost to a guy from the Soviet Union who was thirty-two. And then this who is played professionally in you know behind the Iron Curtain. They said he played professionally for over a decade. And then came over, and they had to. They literally said, "We're changing this because of what just happened." Because. Madonna should have won it, and they're like, "We're doing an age cutoff at 26," and it was like, "That makes sense." Which but is that's fair. still shitty that he didn't win that. Yeah, I, he earned it, but you know what? Dude, they don't like those Americans in hockey. Sometimes it's, it's like a BYU student winning a freshman of the year award. Oh You're like, dude, he's 32. He has 13 children from three women and another nine from two. That's all I'm saying. Anyway. He's the uh, what was it, Sergei Makarov? He's yeah. probably just smoking Marlboro Reds in the tunnel before every game. He had like, played for he, Margarov played for so long he played without a helmet while smoking. While smoking. That's <laughs> that's the kind of man he was, and he was a man. This man had blisters on his feet from standing in bread lines. <laughs> anyway, ninety ninety one, um, they get a um, Bob Ganey is their new coach. Yep, and. Uh, very Ho- defensive. Very defensive, which Madonna's a good defensive. I mean, he's a great two way back and forward. Yes. Like, I mean, but it's very defensive based for this extremely mediocre, shall we say, team. Where I feel like if the team was better, that would have worked in a better sense. But like being that defensive, you just get pounded all the time, it feels and like. And not only that, you're not, you know, cutting the strings loose on Madonna and some of these other guys who yep. can actually put the puck in that. Um, he has 64 points that year, which is great considering how conservative on offense they were. Um, they go 27, 39, and 14. Mm-hmm. But because the NHL I was just... at this time with playoff seeding was very interesting, they make the playoffs. I because I saw the record and I remember thinking I was like, well, I know they made the, did they make the playoffs next year? And I was like, no, they moved next year. Yeah. It was it was such a one of those things Two where I was years, like, but yeah, yeah, but. It, you know what I mean? Where I was like, they won 20 games and they're in the playoffs. Uh, granted, I think they are the lowest seed. Mm-hmm. They're the lowest seed in the North Division. I think the North. Well, they are because seed, yeah. the first seed, they literally beat the best team in the regular season. <laughs> they beat the, the President's Trophy winning Blackhawks. Yep. Going on a run where they're not changing their underwear, Chris. These beards are getting. Inspiring children on a woe begone District 5 team. Oh, my God. Um, 
They beat Chicago in six games. Then they match up with uh, the Blues, St. Louis. Louis. This is the this is the era we talked about on a previous episode of the Blues just fucking blowing everything in yep. the postseason. It, I'll, we'll bring it up again because literally the Blues are always in the playoffs and they're just like, oh, they, yeah, they lost. Again. It's not even always a bridesmaid, never a bride. No, it's they're... like you're the usher doing cocaine in under the table with a cake. St. Louis, St. Louis, and That's then they St. beat the Oilers. Who I mean, they were defending Stanley Cup champions. I was just gonna say they won in five games. <laughs> so everything is clicking. This team just is playing out of their, you know, what I what I would imagine they they really just come together at the exact perfect time, and everybody else is like tired from the season kind of shit. Yeah. And uh, they go to the Stanley Cup versus the old Pittsburgh Penguins. And for the first four games, it's a very tough series. I know Minnesota takes game one. Yep. They're really hanging tough and giving the pins fits, but it's one of those... You know when you watch a playoff series where one team just has more talent than the other, mm -hmm. and then they just, for whatever reason, just turn it on? And they Yes, and, and it, it's like... It's like full periods of them just dominating, and you're just like, we can't deal with this. The Lemieux, I mean, in that, I yep. mean, we talked about in that episode, you couldn't stop him. You couldn't stop him by the end of the series. Yeah. And they end up losing in six. Madonna, though, has 20 points mm -hmm. in 23 postseason games. And you're thinking, oh my God, they saved the team. Randy Newman's got a Fargo accent. They're going to stay in Minnesota. And for 91 92, he has 77 points, which is great. Um, they lose to Detroit in seven in the playoffs that year. Um, and also in 1992, Mr. Madonna earns a spot in the Screen Actors Guild for his role in the cinematic masterpiece directed by Stephen Brill, The Mighty Ducks. That's right. That's right. Mike Madda. He heard that, Mar that Gordon Bombay was a farmer. <laughs> That's why he quit. Dude, no. my, Mike Madonna used to kill in Pee Wee's. That That's guy a, used to rule Pee Wee's. That guy used to rule in Pee Wee's. He, and he, you know what? Mike Madonna, you never saw him getting 30 DUIs. No. No. Mm -mm. Do you think if the Stars had won that, the North Stars had won that, they would have stayed in Minnesota? Because it felt like the writing was on the wall, where even if they had won that, because they said the... The fan base just wasn't there at that time. No, they were doing what I was researching. They were doing like everything. They were almost giving tickets away yeah. at that point. I think maybe if they had won, there might have been enough support from like rich people to maybe buy out whoever owned the, the people oh, yeah. that owned the team. Yeah. But even that would have been a Hail Mary yeah. as far as investment. Because for most of that franchise's history, pretty crappy. Yes. <laughs> pretty crappy. Uh, so the next year, 92-93, the last season in the Great White North for the North Stars, uh, has a career high with 93 points. He, now he's emerged as one of the NHL's kind of best up-and-coming forwards. You know, and, and still in this very defensive yes. team um, that we'll get into later. But, yeah, he, he's really... One of the best assist man, but he also is like he almost splits points. You know what I mean? But it, he makes the team better around him. Yep. We know when we talked in our Brett Hull episode how he was just a fucking anchor for plus minus. Yep. Good things happen when Madonna's out there because he's doing everything well. I think there's a period later in his career where he's like literally the second best in plus minus, yeah. and you're like, oh yeah, that's a real statistic in hockey that you're like that helps the team so much. Oh, totally. Uh, he was an NHL All Star this year. Yep. And got a brand spanking new four-year extension for $2 million a season, which means when they're moving to Dallas, that is the face of your franchise right now. Because he became the highest paid player on that team by, like, a lot when they signed this. Yeah. And that was something I imagine where people, like, that didn't really get sports were like, Minnesota might stay. They just signed. And you're just like, no, no, no. They're signing him because they're moving. Yes. They need to show the people of Dallas we care. Yep. We just, it we're was putting something fun. in this. Yeah. <laughs> and what does he do his first season in Dallas? Kerr high 50 goals. Yep. Kerr high of 50 goals. Um, basically. And 93 points. Yeah. That was the, the thing that I love about the, the kind of hockey player that he is, is you're just like, oh, yeah, he is all over that ice. And this is the window where he's doing this or putting up similar numbers every single season. Mm -hmm. And the stars are finally starting to get pieces to build 
an actually really viable hockey team. I was going to say, they start throwing the pieces together, which it's fun to look back and see, and you're just like, oh, that's starting to... Starting to come together. Starting to build. He has a little injury over the next two years. Yeah. Um, um, missing some games with... Uh, fucked up some tendons in his ankle. Yep. I saw. Ruptured ankle tendons. He had a knee injury. Mm -hmm. A concussion. But I feel like a concussion's so standard for hockey players, so it's yeah. not even like... What a CTE, anyway. Yes, dude. Seriously, though. Um, but 94, 96, like you said, that was kind of some injury riddled seasons. Um, they have a new coach, though. I was going to say Ken so. Hitchcock. Yep. And uh, they pick up uh, a couple seasons later, they pick up a guy in goal that we did some an episode on who had a lot of good uh, solutions to his drinking problems. Eddie Belly for. Eddie Belly. And. This is like what we were saying because they also get uh, Sergei Zuboff and Hitchcock coming in. Joe Newendike, man, he was Joe, really good. Yes, so like, and with Hitchcock coming in, this was the thing that I saw was Madonna's time literally went from fifteen to eighteen minutes to literally twenty five. Every yeah. like that was his average, and like what you said, he was just like, yeah, he let him do what he wanted offensively because he knew how good defensively he was. So you're the like. Well, top three plus minus guy in the league. Mm -hmm. And putting you on the ice more would, would help us? Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Yep. And I, also, I don't like, think they thought too hard about that decision. Not, well, it, it, well, it wasn't happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you get a, a really great Dallas Stars team in a really great Western Conference, which we've had a bunch of talks on yeah because well, there really are three teams that are they so be, they become number three to jump in this little yep little, little arena. red wing avalanche thing happening so they won the central division in 96 97 yep um they lost in seven to edmund they play edmonton all the freaking time mm -hmm. i was figuring edmonton out. and uh, and the uh, blues and the blues yet uh 97 98 um they win the president's trophy mm -hmm. which is best record in the league so even over colorado and uh Detroit, and that's the year they get Ed Belfort, and that's what yeah. everybody says is uh, that's like when it all comes together. That's the final piece because Ed's in net, and he's got a BAC of about point one two. That's right. Um, that season though is kind of shitty for Madonna. Uh, Brian Marchment uh, helps uh, tear some knee ligaments, um, or no, 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 he separates his shoulder. And uh, he also got iced. New and I got iced by Marchman in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. So that's what kind of brings him down that year. Uh, limited. He only played in 52 games that season because of the injuries. Um, Marchman tore his ACL, though they beat the Sharks in six games. Mm -hmm. They end up going to the Western Conference Finals in uh, Detroit against Detroit. Against Detroit, but get. Yeah. Well, they were defending Stanley Cup champions. Yeah, that was when Detroit was hot. and But uh, 14 points. In the uh, postseason, he always had good postseasons. He always did. Um, then for ninety eight, ninety nine, they add the Fulton to his Charlie Conway. <laughs> who do they pick up, Chris? I didn't see who the, who was on added on ninety nine. Oh, uh, Hull. Hull. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's right. I was going to say that wicked slap with his wicked wrist. Well. I don't know why I thought he came the next year, but this is the year they they win. But they said this in an interview. They were like, picking up Hull from the Blues was one of those things where they were like, he, he's available? Yeah. You're letting him go? Oh, he's free. It was, yes. <laughs> like, it was one of those things from a franchise where they were just like, yeah, yeah, we're done with, <laughs> we're done with, with one this of the, piece. We're done with probably the other greatest. Well, no, because he was born in Canada. Yeah. So, I mean, they both played in 98 for Team USA, which was an... Absolute letdown in the Olympics. Big things were expected, and uh, so was they it trashed the hotel room? Yes, all I, was just, I was just going to say, was that the one where they really showed a good USA? <laughs> you know what I <laughs> yeah. mean? Give, give, showing what America's all about, Chris. That uh, red, we white, trash it. We trash a good hotel room. Oh, uh, but now you're with a dynamic duo you haven't seen since the '94 Junior Goodwill Games. This is true. Um, that year in 77 games, he has 81 points, um, and the Stars win the President's Trophy again. So the best team. So best team again, and now they're getting into the playoffs where they're stacked. Mm -hmm. um, sweep Edmonton, beat St. Louis in six, and then in the finals, they got to play the Avalanche 
and they're down three to two in the series. Um, what ends up happening, they end up coming back to win, and that was the last game ever played at McNichols Arena. The, really? The game, yeah. I didn't know that was the last game. That was the way they moved to the Pepsi Center the next year. Interesting. The Pepsi Center Stan. Oh, the s- Pepsi Center. Take the shot! Stan! <laughs> Stan Marsh yeah. needs his bike back. God. That was a great episode. Oh, I, there has the ending. The avalanche comes in. Oh, God. Let them play. <laughs> oh, man. But they go to the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, first time in Dallas. Mm-hmm. First time in almost a decade. Um, and they're playing. The East this year was crazy. I don't know if you read anything about how their playoffs unfolded. Tons of upsets. Really? Yeah. No, I didn't see that one. Tons of them. So Buffalo riding Dominic Hasek, who was just... Oh, yeah. You know, electric that postseason and many others. Um, They play Buffalo uh, in that series. Uh, Madonna breaks his wrist in game two. So they have video of this. He, He scores a goal, puts his hand on the on the goal. Guy from Iceland comes up, smacks his hand. Banksy breaks his hand. Here's what Mike Madonna does the next day, next game, right before the game. Nobody thinks he's going to play. Walks up to Charlie and goes, "Look what I can do." (laughs) Stick in hand, turns it over. And he takes his spot on the team. Takes his that spot on the team. Freaking cake eater. Because we needed the knuckleballer Hall in the there. He wasn't gonna. G- <laughs> he wasn't gonna take his spot. When I think but- NHL slap shots and success, I think South Central Los Angeles, Chris. That's, that's correct, sir. <laughs> I think street ball. And when I say street ball, I mean street hockey. Right. Um, but breaks his hand game two. And there's no question that he's going to still play. Which no, is, it's the old Kenny Main line. Yeah, but he's tough. He's a hockey player. That's right. Like, that's right. The, you think Madonna's getting denied after this? After moving with the franchise? Well, close losses. What? What? Because sometimes you're like, oh, he's out there, but like he's injured, and like I get that he's better than somebody else, but he didn't like perform. He had five of the last their five last goals he assisted on all of them including the game winner in game six in triple overtime yep scored by who we discussed Mr. this mr hall mr hall on june 19th but 1999 it was it like when you look at these stats because he had 23 points in the playoffs but like the the stats from game two on you're yeah. just like oh he's playing with a broken wrist it's like I'm Mr. Dallas Star. My team needs me now. Yeah, seriously. Like, well, it's that's the that's a hockey player where you're like, dude, this is the last game of the series. We don't know if we're coming back, sir. Your radius is showing through your padding. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> what was it? The goon line. Do you have any fucking Percocet? Yep. So, <laughs> two things. Do you have any Percocet? Stay away from my Percocet. Yeah. <laughs> 99-2000, another great season. This is the star's best window. Yes, this is. When when he's there, 77 uh, games, 81 points, uh, number two seed in the West. Uh, they beat Edmonton five because they're still pissed about losing to him that one year. Mm-hmm. Um, they get a bit of a break, though, in the next round playing San Jose because the Blues epically collapsed as the one seed. And San Jose is always bad so not only were people surprised they were in that playoff but yeah. man um they play colorado again yep, in the western in the- Con- and it goes seven again because these were always exciting series to watch but then they let's just say the best team in the east wasn't upset like they were the previous year yeah so we get a really good new jersey devil team a fucking mean new jersey devil these teams were so mean but good and they to be honest, like uh, Madano has like a great. Uh, I think it was the second game. Yeah, um, scores in overtime to win, but it felt like they weren't in the series. Like it felt like the Devils really kind of controlled the series. So they scored two or less goals in the final five games of the six game series. Yep, like I saw they that. Just kind of were held in check and couldn't get really anything going offensively. And Scott Stevens and God damn, they were. 
They were so good. They, it was so yeah. De- yeah. Devils win four two. But going back to back Stanley Cups is pretty amazing for a team that had made what I think they went once and played the Isles in like the early eighties, and then they played and then again that the we talked. Yeah, and they were just garbage in between. Like we talked about, I think in our WHA episode, they put the team in St. Paul, mm-hmm. and they were out drawing the North Stars. So yep. <laughs> anyway. Um, next three seasons, they're still a competitive team. He has 200, 249 points over these three seasons. But this is when the Avalanche take over? Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Where you see these, you're like, that the was The Avs your, and Red Wings come yes, back. That was your guys' window, and now these other teams kind of stacked up. And, yeah. Um, but, yeah, they uh, uh, missed the playoffs. Or in 2002, 2003. Missed the playoffs. Yeah. Um, they end up losing to Anaheim. And that was when Anaheim had that ridiculous run to yep. the Stanley Cup. I remember. You think I don't know a Mighty Duck team making That's a run right. to the Cup? Come <laughs> on. Uh, Jaguar, that was the goalie that, that they was, just couldn't, that nobody was, could figure him out. Was that when they were wearing the Mighty Duck yeah, uniforms? Was that when, was. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't that when was they the, won with those. No. no, these were with the quack. Yes. Quack. I can't believe they got away from that. I know, right? What are they thinking? I did want to bring up in the winter of 2002, he won a silver medal. Won a silver medal. Oh, I'm glad. Olympics. Yep. Dirty Canadians beating them. Well, the, this was a better accounting of American hockey because the last time they showed up, they were like, guys, we're not going <laughs> to let you back. Yeah. Oh my God. It's like you've been 86 out of Japan. Yep. I wonder what you have to do to get 86 out uh, of Japan, Chris. Well,. Gotta ask these boys. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, as you had said before, from 96 to 2002, um, he had 78 points a season and was the top plus minus guy yeah, yeah. in the league. For uh, I saw that. For like six years, he was like what you would imagine the best offensive guy in hockey when you play a more defensive style. Yeah. Um, and then 78 points average is pretty sick. Yeah. No, I mean you. You you did exactly what you were drafted to do. Exactly. <laughs> um, oh three, oh four. He's finally named captain of mm-hmm. the team. Uh, I saw that he goes over a thousand points for his career. Um, Loose to Colorado in the first round, and then we don't have hockey in two thousand four, two thousand five. Yep. And then when Let's we come take the year off when they when they come back, he debates going to Boston. I saw that, which I I'd never heard before. Which I I thought. In that era, you were like, "Oh, that could have made that team," you know, like it would have made them less crappy than they were. That's for but sure. it, it's just such a interesting thing where you're like, "Well, the, the stars are on their downslope," and he was looking for another team, but he ends up staying, which I, I like. He gets his 500th goal. Mm-hmm. Um, he has this Mike Madonna day. Yeah, I saw that. Where mm. I I actually thought they were really appropriate with this, where they were like, "No, no, no, you were our first star." For the first team here, yeah. in, you know what I mean. For the first hockey team here in Dallas, like you're our guy, and he was just like, "Oh, that that's pretty good." You know what? He did it in America, Chris. Yes, he didn't do it north of the border. That's why it all worked. That's why, yeah. You know what I mean? Why do you think he wants to sign in Boston? That's right. <laughs> he want to sign in Montreal. Nope. Um, oh five, oh six, seventy seven points. So as a thirty six year old, that's. Uh, I was gonna say he is really getting into the twilight of his career, but he's still producing. Um. 2007, uh, March 13th, scores his 500th goal. Um, he was the 14th ever score 500 with a single team and 39th overall to score 500 in history. Yeah. And then St. Patty's Day, you know, just a few days later, he scores two against the Preds to pass Joe Mullen as the most goals by an American in NHL history. Yep. Which, you know, is awesome. As we've been talking about before, Captain America, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, Lost to Vancouver in the first round that year at seven. Um, 07 08 season, November 7th. Most points by a U.S. born player um, with two goals in the first five minutes. Um, the president at the time, George W. Bush, even called him from Air Force One to congratulate him. That's right. He's like, You're a true blue Dallas. I have your vote kind of thing. <laughs> kind of like. Play, I hope they played the Hulk Hogan theme. Oh, they like had to. Rick have. Derringer's Real American after that. Mm-hmm. They had to have, right? That they needed it. That, that should be our national anthem. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, Bit of a drop-off after 2007. Well, he's 37 years old. I was just going to say, he's literally 37. So, 
Yeah. Um, let's see. His final game uh, from 2008 to 2010, um, his last two seasons, 76 points combined, which you would expect out of somebody 40 yep. years old. Yep. In his final game, it was actually against the Wild in Minnesota. Named the game's first star, and he skated around in a North Stars jersey, yep. which is like, that's a kind of, I mean, he, obviously he plays one more year, but that's kind of a nice way to close the book there. Yep, I, I thought that was really great. Um, so he ends up signing for the Red Wings this next year. Mm -hmm. Hometown. Which, that's what people were saying. They were like, he's either going to go to Minnesota Wild yeah. or, the, or the Red Wings. Um, has an okay season. Can't wear number nine, though. Which Wears number shame. 90. He's to wear 90. Um, he gets kind of screwed at the very end. I though. was going to say this is why bringing this up is actually kind of shitty. Is he gets a healthy scratch from a team, so he wasn't injured. Yeah. On the night that would have been his fifteen hundredth game played in the NHL, and he never got that game. He never got that fifteen hundred. Could have used it in 0405, but oh no, we have that lockout. So he ends up, he has 1,499 games played, which is kind of actually, I like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, like you were saying, most goals by an American, most points by an American. Um, played in seven All-Star games? Seven All-Star games. Played in uh, three Stanley Cups and won one, which is ridiculously awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brought hockey to the South. Brought, ha brought, brought hockey. successful hockey to the South. There you go. Say. And it made it. A staple, you know, the stars are a, a, a staple in this league. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, man. His number nine's retired. He was a hockey hall of famer in 2014. Yeah. Named one of the 100 greatest players, and they have a statue outside. Which you'd think that 50 years ago Dallas would have a successful hockey team with a statue of an American-born player. <laughs> yep. They, now, if you had said that to a Canadian in about 1960, they would have looked like you, you looked at you like you just took a shit on their porch. Or if you said it to a guy in Dallas, he'd be yeah. like, "Can we get that hockey guy off of there and yeah. put a golf guy on there?" <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very yeah. much. <laughs> Must be a great golfer. Huge ass. Huge ass. 